SPY versus IVV ETFs. Now in this video, I'm going to be comparing these two awesome ETFs. I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know, including things like expense ratio, dividend yield, the shares they are holding. So if you are interested in the differences between the SPY and IVV ETFs, then keep watching this video as this will be one of the most valuable investing videos you have ever watched. Okay, so we can see that right now the SPY and IVV ETFs are very, very close in terms of the last trade value. Uh, you can see that SPY was trading at $104.44 and IVV $104.99. So <laughs> literally a few cents different. Now SPY is issued by State Street Global Advisors and IVV is issued by BlackRock. Now, to be honest, guys, it doesn't really matter who the issuer is, as long as they are a fairly big player, and both State Street and BlackRock are huge, huge investment firms, so this is absolutely awesome, and we don't need to worry about either issuer. This next part is very, very interesting, and this is when we get to the expense ratio. Now, if you don't yet know what an expense ratio is, it's effectively the management fee that an ETF is going to take, basically for putting the funds together and managing the funds. So with SPY, we get a 0.09% expense ratio, and with BlackRock, we only get a 003 So this means that owning SPY is three times more expensive year over year than IVV is going to be. So that is something very, very interesting to keep in mind. Uh, we also have SPY, coming in with a very cool 71 billion more in assets under management. So a much bigger market cap right there for SPY. Now coming down to the uh, daily average volume, you can see that SPY absolutely destroys it here. And SPY is one of the most traded stocks in the world. And it really shows with this huge, like ridiculously huge daily volume right here. 36.62 billion dollars every single day traded on this stock. And this absolutely dwarfs IVV's 2.44 billion. So just keep in mind that I, I don't really think with either of these stocks you are going to struggle with exit liquidity. So whether this really makes a difference or not is, is arguable. Uh, both of these track the S&P 500, very, very simple. And we actually have an extra holding on SPY. Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure what this extra holding is, but we will try and find out. Okay, so right here, we have the costs associated. Of course, we have already covered the expense ratio. And with the average spread, uh, it, it would almost make sense to say that this expense ratio would go up to 0 0.4. But not really, because you only deal with spread twice. So this would be when you buy and when you sell. So this would only make a difference if you buy and sell in a short period of time. But if you hold over the space of 10, 20, even 30 years, uh, the spread isn't really going to make that much of a difference at all. So just keep in mind, guys, that if you are trading these ETFs, that uh, IVV is going to have a tiny little spread here. But if you are investing and holding long term, which is <laughs> what I do and what I would recommend anybody to do really is invest, uh, well, this average spread isn't really going to matter. Now, this, this medium tracking difference is quite, uh, quite important right here and quite interesting. So what this means, if you don't know, is of course these stocks, both of these ETFs right here, are trying to track the S&P 500. So what this so what this median tracking difference is is this is the difference between the S&P 500 and the actual returns of the ETF. So you can see right here IVV was very very close to the S&P 500. It was only 0.04% off with the returns. Um but SPY right here was almost what it was that three times it was almost three times as far away from the actual price of the S&P 500. But I mean, it's still not terrible. It was only 0.13% away. But that is something to keep in mind that IVV actually did perform better. We then have the exact same capital gains rate right here. So this doesn't make a difference. And then this section is very, very interesting right here. So we have over the past month, both of these have performed pretty much identical. IVV coming in with a 0.02% extra gain right here. Over the past three months, we have fallen on both of these stocks. SPY fell slightly more than IVV. Uh, year to date, we are down with SPY being down slightly more, 0.4% uh, more. 
Over the past one year, we are down pretty much the same on both of these stocks right here. Once again, SPY performing slightly worse. And we can see a pattern here of SPY performing slightly worse in every area. However, I really wouldn't say it's much of a concern. Over the past three years, we have performed, we are up 13% on both stocks, IVV performing slightly better once again. Over the past 5 years, we are up 12% on both stocks, and over the past 10 years, we are up 13%. Now if we go down, we can see the top holdings. Of course, these are both going to be the same, as they both follow the S&P 500. So these top 10 stocks right here, will just be the top 10 market cap stocks in the entire stock market. As you can see, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, Class A and Class C. So this is Google's parent company. We then have Tesla, Berkshire Hathaway, which is Warren Buffett's company, Johnson & Johnson, NVIDIA and United Health Group. So both the exact same there and we also have pretty much the exact same percentage of holding in both areas. And that is both of the stocks compared. So that makes sense that if we come over to the fund overlap, <laughs> you can see they are 100% the same. So the shares that both of these ETFs are holding, this makes zero difference and everything comes down to basically how much these ETFs are going to cost. Uh, what we can also do is we can actually backtest both of these portfolios just to see how much of a difference this 0.07% would have made. So if we do this over the past 10 years, so we start from 2011, and we start with an initial investment of $10,000, we are going to reinvest the dividend in both of these stocks. So we are going to go for SPY versus IVV. So what we can do is analyze both of these portfolios and we go 100% for this, 100% and analyze. Okay, so if we take a look at this right here, we can see that it doesn't really make a difference whatsoever to the final balance. If we had invested $10,000 into both of these ETFs, we would have came out with 40,755 by investing in SPY and 40,981 by investing in IVV. However, there is something that this doesn't take into consideration of both of these ETFs. We can see that if we take into account the expense ratios, it's going to be we would have came out with more money at the end of the day by investing in IVV as the expense ratio is much cheaper. Now out of these two ETFs, I personally prefer the IVV ETF. However, this is not financial advice and it is my opinion only. Before making any investment decisions, you should consult a professionally trained financial advisor as this video was made purely for entertainment purposes only. Now, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button and tap that subscribe button. And until next time, guys, take it easy.